Shalom Aleichem, sweetest friends. This year should be a special schuss for Rabbi Avram Yitzchok ben Esther, schuss his son, Yisrael Aaron ben Ram Yitzchok, who is Noidlad Lamazel Tov. You should have a lot of bracha and simcha and atzlacha and everything in Ritz Hashem, Besiyat Dishmaya. And we're Fuas. Miriam Baschaya, Esther Rus Bas Naomi Sarah, Sarah Leah Bas Rivka, and Lili Nishmas Maris Esther Bas Shmuel, and we are going to be learning an Indian in Parshas Korach, Haba Aleinu Ba'al Kol Yisrael Litova, based on the beautiful, beautiful Sefer, Ma'amare Pachad Yitzchak and Sukkis, in Simon Nun Beis. It says in the Torah, Vanihi Nein Asati Lechos Mishmeres Trumosai, etc. Lechon Asati, Lemoshcho, Levanecho, Lechok Oilam. So the Kohanim are promised the Truma for all the generations. So Rashi explains that there's a mushal here to help us understand why God gave them here the, the uh, Truma. There was a king who gave a field to his beloved. He didn't write down this deed that he gave him the field. He didn't sign he didn't bring it into the courts. Ba'echad ve'ir alav ala sade. Some's somebody and he son comes somebody and he says, "Ozeb is what ma pitom that this is your field." He was ma'ar on the person on the field. He says you don't deserve it. Amalei amela kol misha yirtze yavo v'yirar lenegdecha areni koisiv v'choisiv v'chol malar bar koin. So the king says to him, "You know what? Misha shlo ba'ya al tedak. Somebody has a problem." I write down that it's yours, I sign that it's yours, and I bring it into the courts that it's yours. So the king says, what do they say today? You have my back. I'll take care of you. Afkan, here also. Here also, there was a challenge to the kahuna of Aaron from the bald one, Korach. Korach is Meloshim Kereach. We're not so far from that ourselves these days, Baruch Hashem, but that's Meiratzon. Thank God, some people don't, I don't get to choose. I got to choose. In any event, the um, Korach challenged the kahuna of Aaron. And now God says, no, 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 I'm going to give you the Choftal of Manus Kahuna. You're going to get Shumas, you're going to get Maisus, it's going to be Gishmak, you're going to get a lot of nice things. Why? Because you're chosen. You are chosen for the Kahuna. And the Mela, I'm going to give you these, This like, that's like the confirmation of their Kahuna. These giving of the gifts. That's why it's juxtaposed the whole story of Korach. What's this whole parasha doing here of the Matnas Kahuna? The answer is, it's all about Korach. It's about telling Korach, sending that message to anybody who has Korachic ideas that the iron is the correct Kohen, he and his children for all the generations. So the question is, just like Korach challenged Aaron, Korach also challenged Moshe. And the whole machlokas with Aaron was via Moshe. So why does Aaron Dafka get this adifus, this preference of this whole parsha to show that he's the man? What about Moshe Rabbeinu? Why don't we have anything showing that he's the man? So we want to understand the relationship between these two brothers and their partnership, as it says in the pasuk Shevis Achim Gam Yachad, which according to the Chazal and the in Varim Rabbo, in, in Harayis, and Afidalif, this is referring to Moshe and Aaron. That they're this Shevis Achim Gam Yachad. We want to understand these, these two brothers and their relationship. So Chazal tell us that Im Nase Din Lamata, Eina Din Nase Lamal. This is Dvarim Rabbo, Parashah. If judgment is done down here on earth, judgment isn't done up there in Shemayim. And if Judgment is not done down here on earth. Then judgment is done up there in Shemaim. Because if we take care of the din here, there's going to be no din from up there. If we don't take care of the din here, then there's going to be din from up there. 
So if you have a sensitive ear to the nuances of the language of our sages, you'll notice that these words are coming la'afuke to exclude the normal hanhaga of midah keneged midah. Now we have what we do down here, what we, there's a parallel up there. Mida keneged mida. And here it's fakert. If there's din lamata, there's not din lamala. There's that parallel. Mida keneged mida. Meaning normally it is mida keneged mida. What we do here is also up there. Aberduz, God is andrish. Here it's different. What we do here, not abzel. What we no do here, yes abzel. <laughs> that's, that's, what, that's what Chazal are telling us. That this is mufka, if I may use a uh, Talmudic term. This is precluded from the normal rules of Mida Kenegan Mida. You would think. That if down here we're osik and v'al malshin amalti sikva, up there they're osik and v'chol arisha kula kash and tichle. No, it's fakert. If there's biura lemata, then there's no charona flamala. So this is the nigud, this contrast of lamata lamala. There is lamata, there isn't lamala. There isn't lamata, there is lamala. Givaldi. So why is taka there no mida keneged mida? In this case of din, we know there's a mitzvah of Allah to bedrach of just like God is merciful, you have to be merciful. God visits the ill, you have to visit the ill. And they who have to emulate imitation of di as they taught us in Latin when I was studying in Boston Latin, my youth. Which is interesting because I've actually never been to Boston and I don't speak one word of Latin. The morale was koveya. This is a maral and a sivas oilam, a siv gemilus chesed in the first parak. That all the anhagos that are included in the anhag and in the din of in the klal of mahu afata that you have to follow God, you have to emulate God, is only in the world of chesed, not in din. We don't say just like God gives people illnesses, you should also give people illnesses. Just like God takes people's lives, you should also take. Pff, no, no. מזוק נשת הזוי. אנחנו לא, לא אומרים כך. אנחנו רק אומרים בקו החסד. כשהשם עושה חסד, גם אנחנו. מה שהשם עושה דין, זה עניינים שלו, אנחנו לא מבינים כלום. That's God's world. What he does is, his, he understands much better than he understands. We, don't, we understand nothing. He knows why he's doing it with his more than infinite wisdom. We don't get it. We don't get it. When we imitate God, it's not in the world of Din. It's just in the world of Chesed. When he's doing Chesed, we have to emulate him and also do Chesed. Why? So here comes a big episode. And that is that a person has no right to judge another person. Misam chasar v'shofet aleinu. If I may uh, use the law, paraphrase a pasuk. Who made you judge? What right does one person have to judge another person? Don't you feel like ire? Doesn't it arouse your ire when people judge you? I'll be honest with you. This is a personal thing and I just wanted to keep it between me and you. It gets me very upset. Like, who are you to judge me? What right do you have? Who do You're not me. If you were me, then we can talk. We can read. But until you're me, I don't know how to get to the place. You mind my place? No. They say before you criticize somebody, you should first walk a mile in their shoes. Walk a mile in their shoes and then you have something to say. Why? Because this way if they get angry, you're a mile away and you have their shoes. But in general, we have no right to judge. Hi, how taka do we have courts? We have a special minui. We have smicha. We have a special din that these people are allowed to judge. It's 
special din. Otherwise, if there'd be no mitzvahs of courts, also the Goyim also have courts. Is a mitzvah of Goyim to have courts also in Shem Mitzvah Enoch. But if not for that mitzvah to have courts and not for our smicha, wouldn't be allowed to judge anybody. Only the Shoifet Kola Aretz can judge. So you need a special minui, which in our context is smicha, in order to judge. But when it comes to chesed, you don't need a rishayon, you don't need special permission to do chesed. Chesed, you can do that, you don't need any permission. So that's why when it comes to me, the sadin, we can't have a law of mahu afata, because by din we're just a shliach of Hashem. But it's not us. So you can't say I want to walk in God's way when we don't have any independent right to be involved in this. We're just here as God's shliach. So if there's no din of mahu afata, when you're in the world of din, you're only God's shliach when he makes you his shliach, and otherwise we're mufka. Otherwise we're completely excluded from this whole notion of, of, of judging others. Beautiful idea. No, people don't know this. We have no right to judge. We judge all the time. Well, we don't even realize it. All the time, walk around and judge. We like this. We don't like that. He's doing right. She's doing wrong. He should have said this. He shouldn't have said this. He should have gone there. He shouldn't have gone there. We judge ourselves. We judge our spouses. We judge our parents. We judge our children. We judge our siblings. We judge our neighbors. We judge politicians. We judge. We judge. We judge. Is this good? Yes. What's it? This is the Teva. We Teva. So in the world of judgment, we have no right. There you're just a shliach when, you have, when you're made the shliach. Otherwise, no mahu afata. Aval, kshem dubar b'chesed. Chesed ze parasha acheret. B'chesed you do. You have to be like God. There you have independent right to do chesed. There you follow in the ways of God. We find that God does mitzvahs. Sher kideshanu b'mitzvah yisav v'vitzivanu. It's God's mitzvahs. We've seen the Medrash that God does mitzvahs. We've seen the Gemara Brachas, Davav. It says God puts on tefillin. God davins, all these different mitzvahs. We see that HaKadosh Baruch Hu does. Not only that, God also does the mitzvahs, uh, the mitzvah of Zekeli Van Veyu. God does the mitzvah of Zekeli Van Veyu. How? Mahu Afata. That He is Mizdamet to us. Mida can I get Mida? What we do, he does. When we do Chesed, we open up this window of Chesed. God does Chesed. As is. It's the way God works. Kviyachol. Now we understand. Chazal say when there is Din Lamata, there is no Din Lamala. What does that mean? It means that since we're in the world of din, there's no midah connected midah in din. Remember we said? And when it comes to din, there's no din of mahu afata. Normally, we imitate God's ways and God imitates our ways. We try to be like God and God tries to be like us. We see God's about chesed. We also want to do chesed. God sees that we do chesed. He wants to do chesed. There's this sort of symbiotic relationship, if that's the correct term. We're interrelated. We're interconnected. Asana HaKadosh Baruch Hu, our deeds and his deeds. But when it comes to din, different category. There's no such thing. There's no mahu afata. We don't follow in God's way when he does din. Our job isn't to do din. We don't say, oh, just like God made this a tragedy happen, allowed this tragedy happen to these people, we should also do, make tragedies. That's shalom. And so too, when we do din, that's what the Medrash is saying, when we do din limato, God doesn't do din limato. That's mufka from the mahalach of midah connected midah. Just like we don't follow in God's ways when it comes to din, we don't carry out din to be like God. There's no ma'awafata. Just when there's a special minu, a special appointment of judges, say them. But in general, we, we follow our own. In general, we don't uh, carry out din unless we're supposed to, unless it's a specific mitzvah. But generally, there's no mitzvah of ma'awafata. 
So too, when we do din, there's no parallel hanog of din, milamala. It says that if you're done din, emislam mitu, you're not a shut of like a baruch my separations. Say that. You're God's partner, but there's no mahu afata. You do din, you're like God's partner, the Gemara says. Say that. There's no mahu afata. There's no imitation di. Just a shliach. The footnote in the Pachad Yitzchak on Yom Kippur and Maimar Chofhei writes that the whole possibility of tshuva is built on the Yisod that there are nekudos in a person that are clean and that have not been sullied by sin. There are nekudos that are clean that have not been sullied by sin. And that's what gives us the possibility of doing tshuva. Because if sin completely encompassed a person, if he's completely saturated with this sin, there's no hope. Like the Gemara says in the Pasuk, Kol Be'elo Yeshuvun, about Minus, Kevin the Avik Batuva, Kim Minus Damio, when somebody's so into an Avera, whether it's a Rias or Minus, it's Kol Kulo Avera, it's one Shtik Avera, and Tikva. The popular song a few years ago, Yesh Tikva. Abapo and Tikva. Person's completely erupt, but there's not usually not the case. Rarely the case. There's always one akud of a person that isn't into this sin. We all have that. We all have that conscience. I don't feel good about it. That's that view, that's a beautiful nakud. It's just we don't want to be sinners. Even the sinners don't want to be sinners. Certainly the non-sinners don't want to be sinners. Bechayda Egel, there was one Nakuda that wasn't Nifga Mitoch Oysa Maisa. Aaron wanted to push it off. Aaron wanted to push off the Chayda Egel. Chag Lashem Mochar. What's Chag Lashem Mochar? I don't really want to do this sin. So you push it off. What you want to do, you have a check, you have a Hundred fifty thousand dollar check, and you, oh God forbid, you owe a hundred thousand dollars to people. So you're very eager. You want to pay back that hundred thousand, and you want to put another fifty in your account. Now you're fifty up. It's pretty good. It's good value. You don't push it off. When you push something off, there's a part of you that doesn't want to do it. Procrastination. You don't want to do it. So that's what the Torah is telling us here. Chag Lashem Machar, he's pushing off the sin. That's the stira. That's Mitzar Chesed that he doesn't want to do this sin. And since we see that Aaron tried to push off the sin, therefore the whole Seder of Kapara for the Chet Egel is via Aaron. Like Rashi is the beginning of Parsha Shemini. Now the Maisim of Moshe being in Chet Ego or Pulis of Din, Hargawish is Achiv. And he judged them. Not only that, we learn a lot of Dine Vidui from Moshe. You have to say Ana, you have to be Farit the Chet. So that's all a Mahalach of Din. Vidui is a type of judging yourself that you did this and you did that. See the Pachad Yitzchak on Yom Kippur, Maim Olam at Heozayim. So Moshe Rabbeinu in the Mechayi Egel is in the world of Din. And Aaron HaKohen is in the world of Chesed that he doesn't want to do the Aveira. He wants to push off the Aveira. And therefore he's the Mechaper. He's the Mechaper because he's the good guy. He does that. We have that in Aaron, that Nekudah. I don't want to do it. Chag L'Shem Mochar. Let's push it off. He doesn't want to do it. So now we understand this partnership between Moshe and Aaron. Before that, there's no partner to Moshe in the Torah of Rabbeinu. Rabbeinu, before Rabbi Nachman, there was a Rabbeinu. You know that? His name is Moshe. No, no, he's not an Uman. You know where he's buried? 
you know you're ahead of all of us. Because the Torah says that nobody knows his Makom Kavura. So we don't know where he's buried. But what we do know is that he's the only Yishu Rabbeinu. No offense, you like going to Uman. This is a different discussion. But I'm talking about Moshe Rabbeinu was the Rabbeinu of the generations. So there's no Shutfus between Aaron and Moshe when it comes to Rabbeinu. Where is there a Shutfus? Sheves Achim Gam Yachad, as we saw earlier, the Pasuk is Darshan on the two brothers. The Shutfus is the Rabbi Der Chelek and Kaparos Chayta Egel. Aaron is Motzi Lepal and Chayta Egel, the Mid of Chesed. Aaron is doing the Chesed. Aaron is pushing off the sin. That's the goodness of Aaron. And therefore, that relates, and that relates to Kahuna. What does it say about Kohanim? Tumecha v'urecha leish chasidecha. The Urim v'tumim. Go to your ish chesed. Aaron is a Kohen, is an ish chesed. Moshe Rabbeinu is an ish din. Haomer laaviv lo lo receive asachiv lo ikir. There, there were relatives. The chayda egal killing their relatives. I don't know you. It's Din. It's coming from Moshe. And just like there is a Onesh in all the generations, whenever we get punished, there's a little bit of the Cheda Egel in that Onesh. We on Pakti or Pakadati, like the Pasuk says. So too in the Cheda Egel, the Cheda Egel is also the Geder Shoresh. Just like the Onesh, all Onshim come from the Cheda Egel, so to all Chatoim come from the Cheda Egel. Right, we wouldn't get punished for every Onesh, also for the Cheda Egel, if that Onesh, if that Chet didn't have part of the Cheda Egel in it. So Mela, the Onshim, the Kola Doros, have in them the Tikkun of the Cheda Egel, sin of the golden calf. So we have two Mahalchim and Kapar Sachet. We have the Pula Sachet of Aaron, pushing it off, bringing the Kapara. That's to Mechav Urech Elish Chasidecha. That's Aaron. And then we have the Din of Moshe. Aaron is Shevet Kahuna, Moshe is Shevet Levi. So they both relate. That's their Shutfus in the Cheda Egel. Aaron and Moshe both mechaper. Aaron through Chesed and Moshe through Din. And that brings the Tikkun of the Cheda Egel. And now we get to our Rabbeinu Yonah. Rabbeinu Yonah writes that about Shuba has to lehoichil b'ma'oyf tsukosoi shiyia choishech siba sa'ira. The Baal Tshuva has to hope in his distress that the darkness will be the source of light. And the Nefila, the Siva of the Kima, the darkness is the source of light and the falling is the source of the getting up. Like it says, Al-Tismichi O'Yavti Li, my enemies shouldn't be happy because because I fell I got up because I sat in the darkness God is my light Pshuto Shel Mikra it's talking about the Nephilus of Knesset Yisrael that all of our Nephilus in the Golos are all ultimately the source of our great victory over the Umas Olam at the end. Ultimately, that's going to be the source of our light. That's going to be the source of our uprising of our Kima. 
Knesset Yisrael, that's Pshuto Shal Mikra. Rabbeinu Yonu was Mechadesh. This is not talking about Knesset Yisrael, that because we fell, we got up. It's talking about every Baal Tshuva. Because he fell, he got up. Like the famous letter of Rudner. Not despite the fact that he fell, he got up. Because he fell, he got up. So that is Pshat. According to Rabbi Yon and the Pasuk, a deeper Pshat. This Pasuk can be learned not only talking about Knesset Yisrael, but even the Baal Tshuva. And from this we learn that there's a mahalach of a Baal Tshuva that his Tshuva should be like the Jewish people's Geula. Just like our Geula, the Nefila was the Siva Sakima, the falling was the reason for the getting up. The darkness was the reason for the light. So too, a Baal Tshuva has the same mahalach, the same pathway from his sin. That was the Siva of his great light. And from this, when we're in the derech to the geula, dort licked Aaron. Shamunach Aaron. That's where Aaron is. Aaron's in the derech to geula. We need his schus because. Remember, it's up to Aaron to bring us to a place of Beli Chet. Remember, the Shara Shavol Chad time is the Chet Egel, which is no say Bifnei Aksma. That's what Chazal tell us. That the Shara all sins are from the Chet Egel, Melo, all Averis are from the Chet Egel. And the Tikkun of these Averis comes from Aaron Akoin. And the Mahalach of the Baal Tshuva is Makbil to the Mahalach of the Gula. So we understand that this mahalach of tshuva and geula is the ribu choshech, is the siva for the ribu yor. Because we had nephilos, we had kimos. That's Aaron. That's the mahalach of the Baal tshuva. That's the tikkun for the chayda egel. So now we get back, Megai Tzurik. Go back to the beginning. Why was Aaron, Dafka, the one who was given these special gifts, he gained so much because of the challenge of Korach and not Moshe? And the answer is that Korach was fighting with Aaron. He was fighting with the Etzem Mitziu Sakahuna. That's what his argument was. And why do we have this Mitziu of Kahuna? That has to be a Kapara for the Chayda Ego. Now that's Aaron's task. Aaron's task now. No longer the Bechoros who are doing the Avodah. It's the Afgaren. It's Shevet HaKahuna. They're the ones who bring the Tikkun. For the Chet Egel and for all sins. That is the, the foundation for the possibility for all of Kaisal to do Tshuva. So since Korach was Cholek al Etzem HaKahuna, so we have to be Mechazik, the Etzem HaKahuna. God's going to sign on to this one. So by Aaron, we need this special Chiddush of Chizuk Mitzius HaKehuna, because Korach was Cholek on the Kehuna. Korach argued, and he was against Aaron being appointed the Kohen. And now, we need to have this special Chiddush, which is what Rabbi Yonah teaches us. That the Mahalach is, is that the, the, the Choshech, 
is the Sibas Ha'or. It's the Sibas Ribu Ha'or. Because Aaron was the Mahalach of Aaron was the Mahalach of Tshuva. And that's darkness being the source for the light. And that's the Chiddush of the Torah. That now Korach, Korach brought this darkness. He was Cholek on the, on the Kahuna. And now there's going to be this new light. There's going to be an enhancement of the Kahuna. Because Korach's, Korach's Machlokes was on, was on the Kahuna. Whose tafkid is to bring kapara. In other words, he was in the, this realm of tshuva. Because the purpose of the Kohanim is to bring tshuva for the Chet Egel and for all Chatayim. And Korach was cholek on it. So since you're in the realm of tshuva now, you're, the darkness that you bring by being cholek on the kuna has to bring to more light. So the male is going to be a strengthening of the kahuna. They're going to get the manas kahuna. But when it comes to Moshe, you don't need this chiddush. Why? Because why were they arguing with Moshe? It's a completely different Mahalach. The arguing with Moshe wasn't on his chilek in the kapara. The, the, when you're arguing with the Metzius of Kahuna, the reason the Kohanim were brought, were made, was to be Mechaber for the Chet Egel. So by being arguing with Kahuna, you're arguing with the whole union of kapara. And there we need this Chiddush, that the darkness now is going to bring more light, like Rabbi Yonah says. When you're arguing with Moshe, they're not arguing with the kapara. What are they arguing with? That he's not the Rabbeinu. You're the, you're the big rabbi. You're the chief rabbi. Who died and made you chief rabbi? They'll tell a story in America in the early 1900s. There was a guy who put up a sign outside of his uh, house. Chief rabbi of America. So somebody asked him, who made you chief rabbi? And he said, the sign maker. Korach said, who made you rabbi? The answer is God. But Korach was arguing with Moshe Rabbeinu with Torav. So maybe there's, there's, there's no need afterwards to affirm Moshe Rabbeinu's... leadership. Because that's Pashat. Why is it Pashat? Because we have a rule. That when you're in the world of Torah, you can only get to the MS through first not getting it. If you ever learned the Sugi, you know that. So therefore, in Moshe Rabbeinu, it's Pashat that the Choshech is going to be Siba Sa'ora. That's the whole Mahalach of the Torah. So there, God doesn't have to confirm Moshe Rabbeinu's leadership role, rabbinic role. Because we understand that's the Mahalach of Debrei Torah, that the darkness is the source for light. So of course if Korach is, 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 is Cholek on Moshe, of course that's going to bring to greater light. Because that's the Mahalach of Debrei Torah. So you don't have to mention this, the, the, the Machlokas of Korach. But by Aaron, there there's a Chiddush. That the darkness is bringing to light. Because we had to learn, like the Rabbi Yonah said, that Aaron's Mahalach is Kapara. That's his purpose. And that's, and that's exactly what Korach was Cholek on. He was Cholek on the Kahuna, and the Kahuna was brought for Kapara. So therefore now you're in this realm of, of, of Tshuva. And in Tshuva, the darkness has to bring to light. And that's the, the Chiddush of, of Rashi, together with Shittim with Rabbi Yonah. Rabbi Yonah says in, in the world of Tshuva, Darkness brings to light. Tshuv and Geula. And that's Bidiuk what the Kahuna is. In the Kahuna, they're taking all the sins and all the darkness and they're making it into more light. And Korach is arguing with this. So therefore, if Korach is arguing with this, with this whole mahalach of tshuva and ultimately geula, because that's where the tshuva is. Tshuva brings to the geula. So we have to have this chiddush that oh, now there's going to be more light, because in tshuva and geula there's 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 there, there's more light when there the darkness is the source of the light, the falling is the source of the getting up. So we need the chiddush of the Torah that there has to be manas kahuna. When it comes to Moshe Rabbeinu, they were cholik on him as a rav. So of course, ain't adam ovein dibrei tovim kein 
Here there was a Kishal and a Divrei Torah. They didn't properly understand the Divrei Torah of Moshe Rabbeinu being their Rav. Of course, there's going to be more light afterwards. So God doesn't need to give them this, uh, give Moshe any special gifts. So if you want to see, there's one little Tosefis that the Rav adds, the Duvdevan uh, Shebekatsefet, the cherry on top. So you can look there at the end of Maimon and Beis, in the Pachad Yitzchak, Mamar Pachad Yitzchak and Sukkis, and the Dvar Mayun is Gavim Me'od, the Amukim, the Ratzon Shenizke, Lil Modu Lelam, Eid Lishma Belasso, the Kaim is called Divrei Salmut Tarasu Bihavo, Amen Vi Amen, Shalom Shalom, sweetest and most beloved friends.